Hello everyone. Welcome back to my machine learning sessions. In this session, we'll be talking about the sigmoid function. We'll see how to plot it uh, hands-on on, on uh, plotting the sigmoid function. And we will also see the derivation of the sigmoid function. We are continuing with the classification. So first, let us see what is a sigmoid function is. A sigmoid function is a mathematical function having a characteristic S shaped curve or a sigmoid curve. Okay. So this we sometimes call also as a sigmoid activation function. Okay. The sigmoid function is defined by the formula the, uh, S of X is equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus X. So this e to the power of minus X can be written as 1 by e to the power of X. Okay. So if you take an LCM, so this we can rewrite as e to the power of X by 1 plus e power x. So here you can see we have written e power minus x as 1 by e, power, e to the power of x. If you take an LCM, it is e power x plus 1 by e power x. And if you reverse the fraction, you will be getting e to the power of x by 1, to, 1 plus e to the power of x. So now you can see uh, this will be the plot of the sigmoid function. And here you can also observe that the sigmoid function have domain of all real numbers with the return value monotonically increasing from 0 to 1. And alternatively, it can also vary from minus 1 to 1. So minus 1 in between, it can uh, stop at 0 or it can be moving towards 1. Okay, so we'll say it varies from minus 1 to 1, the range of all real numbers. Now, let's see how to plot the sigmoid function using matplotlib. So, for this, I will take the help of matplotlib.py plot and also numpy. And I will also take the help of math library. And here you can see I'm using this line space method. So, where I'm taking the values ranging between minus 10 to 10. Okay, and a total of 100 points I'm taking. And here you can see the equation 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus x that using numpy we can write it as np dot exp. And to that power we have to pass the minus x, the equation of the line we will be passing. So here we have the equation of the line. So this we are passing here. So internally this math library will do the equation of the line for us. You need not worry about it. And using pi plot, we are plotting x comma z and by labeling the x label as x and y label as sigmoid. I have all, already made a clear video on how to plot, how to use this method plot using matplotlib. Okay, if you want, I'll provide the i-card for you so you can detail, you can watch in detail about it. Here our major focus is about the sigmoid only. Okay, so let's see how to plot this. Uh, let me switch to my So here you can see I'm using Google Colab for the purpose. Okay, so here I'm importing all the necessary libraries. I'm importing NumPy as NP. Okay, so this line space method is part of this NP. So if you are not familiar with this, you can just Google for it. And here you have this syntax of this line space. You need not be an expert to work with uh, the machine learning problems. Simply you can Google out for whatever is your requirement. So here you have the syntax of the line space. It will accept these arguments. The first parameter is start and the third, second parameter is stop. And number of parameters. All others are, they are just optional ones. Okay. So here the start point I have given as minus 10. The stop point I have given as 10. And then the number of points I have given as 20. So the third parameter you can see. Okay. So number is equals to 50 is defined by default. So here I'm defining it as 20. So you can give any number of your choice. And here I'm performing a scatter plot. So if I use a plot, 
you will get a line plot where the number of points you may not be clear. So for that purpose, I've taken a scatter plot. Yeah. So if you take a line plot here, you can see the output. So here you can see my scale is ranging between minus 10 to 10 and the number of points I have given as 20. Okay, so sigmoid is ranging between 0 to 1. On the left axis, on the y axis, we have taken sigmoid, right? So sigmoid is ranging between 0 to 1 and my line is ranging between minus 10 to 10. Okay, so to observe the number of points, I'll just, uh, I'm just converting this to a scatter plot. So now you can see the change in the output. Yeah, so here 20 points have been taken. Uh, these 20 data points are plotted using the scatter plot. So this is how a sigmoid will be plotted. Say suppose here if you are increasing the number, say let me increase this to 100. Let's run this cell. Whenever you make any changes, you should run that particular cell followed by all others. So here you can see a total of 100 data points. So, so here they have come little bit closer. So you can see a thick line here. Okay, so you can change this number according to your requirements. So based on how clarity you want about the data points and all. So you can change that. Okay, so this is how we will be plotting a sigmoid. Now let us again switch back to our PPT. So here you can see an example application of the sigmoid here. So here the, the problem that we are discussing is so given a car based on the age of the car, okay, so what is the probability of breakdown? So that we are analyzing using the sigmoid. So here you can see, uh, actually after working out with the application, this is the final outcome. Then, so here you can see the data points. So here, if you see after 2.9 years, so we are saying the probability is less than 0 0.5. So here, on the left hand side, you have the probability values ranging between 0 to 1. And here we have the years of service. And if your probability is less than 0 0.5, you can round it off to 0 and the car will not break down. And here there is a threshold value of 0 0.50. So this indicates that the car is more likely to break down after 3.5 years of service. So here you can see these dotted lines. So this point is after 3.5 years and if it is exceeding that the probability is greater than 0 0.5 and we will be rounding off to 1 so saying that the car will break down. So this is how the sigmoid will help us to analyze or to classify the given application. So now let us see how to derive, uh, how to derive this. Okay how to derive the equation for logistic regression. So to understand that, we have to go with some mathematical terms. So first, let us start with the log it function. Okay, so this log it function is the inverse of sigmoid function. Okay, so which is also the logistic function. The logistic transform used in mathematics, especially in statistics. Okay, so and I, I hope all of you know the formula for log odds. So it is, suppose if we say probability as P, then the log it function gives us the log odds. That is logarithm of the odds, which is P by one minus P. So where P is ranging between zero to one, okay? So the probability of success we will measure as P, okay? Failures we will measure as one by one minus P. So now if we take a logarithm of this, Okay, so that gives us the log it function. Log it of x is nothing but log of p by 1 minus p. So this we can also denote, denote it as log a by b can be written as log a minus log b, which also can be written as minus log of 
वन बाय पी माइनस वन ओके सो यूजली द लॉजिस्टिक फंक्शन इफ यू टेक इट इन एन डायमेंशनल स्पेस सो दिस विल लुक लाइक दिस ओके सो वन बाय वन प्लस एक्सट्रीम e to the power of minus of w not plus sigma is equals to one to n w i plus x i where w not is the bias. Okay, so when we worked out uh, worked out with the perceptron. Okay, so we already seen this equation w not plus sigma is equals to one to n w i x i. Okay, so those strained weights or the equation of the equation of y the predicted value the whole value you can supply here so that you will get a sigmoid of it okay so whenever we are saying logistic regression internally we are working with the sigmoid so here the features can be discrete or continuous so this is how the curve looks like so now let us see how to derive this okay so just now we have seen the formula for log odds right odds of theta so that is probability of an event happening divided by probability of an event not happening so that we denote using p by 1 minus p right so now if you take the values of these odds are ranging ranging between 0 to infinity and but the values of the probability lies between 0 to 1 right so now for that what we will do is uh, let us also take the equation of a straight line which is y is equals to mx plus c that I can also write as beta naught plus beta 1 into x you need not uh, confuse with the terms so this is y is equals to this you can take it as m into x this is beta naught is c the constant okay so here beta naught is the y intercept and beta 1 is the slope of the line and x is the value of the x coordinate. So based on this x value and the beta naught and beta 1 values we are going to predict y. Okay. So here y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. And the equation of the line looks like this. Okay. So now, to predict the odds of success, we use this formula. We are just applying a logarithm of it. So here, this is also a prediction and this is also a prediction. So we are going to equate these two. So on the left hand side, we have P by 1 minus P. On the right hand side, we have beta naught plus beta 1 into X. So if I take, so since the equation of the line is ranging between 0 to 1. So, this 0 to infinity of this uh, theta value I want to limit to 0 to 1. So, for that I am applying a logarithm on this theta. So, that is log of p of x by 1 minus p of x which is equals to beta naught plus beta 1 into x. Then let us take exponentiation on both the sides. Okay. So, e to the power of log p of x by 1 minus p of x which is equals to e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, here this uh, ln and e gets cancelled. So, finally we will be left with p of x divided by 1 minus p of x which is equals to e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, now we have the equation of the line right. So, now let us apply, let us take y as e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1 into x. Then what is r y? Just now we got it as p of x divided by 1 minus p of x. Just you can go back and see. So here. So this e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1 x. So this is nothing but the equation of our line. Okay. Y is equals to beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, from that we got this. So, this we have equated to this one. So, then I can rewrite P of X as just get this uh, denominator 
to this side. So then you will you will be getting y into 1 minus p of x. So from this, you can expand it as y minus y into p of x. So then I can say p of x plus y into p of x is y. If we take p of x as common, we can rewrite it as p of x into 1 plus y. Then p of x can be written as y by 1 plus y. Okay. So now let us put that in the equation of this line. So if I put it, so what is my y? y is e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1x divided by 1 plus e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1x. And the equation of the sigmoid function is this one. Okay. We have, I have elaborated you how we got this and from that again we are rewriting it as 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus beta naught plus beta 1x. Okay. So this is about how we can plot a sigmoid function. What is the use of a sigmoid and how we can derive it mathematically. Hope you enjoyed. If you like it, do like, share and subscribe and pass it on to all those who are in need of this. Thank you.